Things are so much worse than you could imagine. Okay. So back in the day, some computer nerds made m machines that would take in a bunch of outside data and process it and try to predict the future, to fund it. They predominantly sold the information to people who wanted to buy and sell stocks. Enough people started doing this that they started making the machines send out stock reports themselves, which other machines took in as data to further sell, buy, and report on stocks themselves. This eventually created a massive feedback loop of stock data being managed by autonomic intelligence, not the same thing as artificial intelligence, that outright blocked out the human element. And right now the open secret is that the market is out of human control. If anyone tried to remove these data loops, even one out of sync chain link could cause the world economy to collapse overnight. You following me so far? So basically, in tandem with this technology, the internet happened and a lot of marketers starting to moving to content marketing, which is the idea that the product and the marketing are the same thing and that you're selling a lifestyle story, which is why if you pay attention, most companies that's used to just sell a product having massive in mass investments into the media space. This is fine in and of itself, the 80s had a similar version of this, the problem is that these proliferation of consumer data reaches, these autonomic intelligences, and they begin to report on what kind of narratives sell and which one don't. Simple, right? Well, not really. You see, we live in a post-hypernormalization world, a Soviet term for propaganda that keeps things are something when they really, when the reality is different. When you mix in marketing and propaganda with feedback loops and you add on top of that Google's ad program that essentially bubbles people into the feedback loops and only give them what they want to hear so you can sell them something, it basically it's a basically creates a mass psychological dissonance between different groups of people that, consciously or not, have their life's context form around media narratives. It's one reason why the social justice stuff is hitting so hard now despite the fact that America is not a worse pretty prosperous country with no major problems causing anyone to starve. Anyway. The implication is that you basically have cultural narrative context being created by literal abstract machinations who may or may not be intelligent. That's no good. Because there's no moral parameter to stop the data from trying to get everyone to kill each other. See, people keep thinking the robot's revolution is going to be Terminator, but it's going to be a more lot like The Shining. So people have their lives contextualized by inhuman machinations, which, okay, it's pretty bleak, but not outright destructive, right? Just a bunch of consumers being taken for a ride, right? Well, no. You see, the consequence of religion being more or less falling out of style in the public consciousness is that there's no longer a single common cultural narrative. So you just don't get to see Tim at Sunday school. So what? Well, the larger point of contention is that there's always been a considerable percentage of any population that gives way to fanatic behavior, which in antiquity usually meant religious fanatism. But if the narrative of religion is weakened, and the only other alternatives to these narratives are automatically generated content marketing narratives too shallow to make a lifestyle out of, you run into a phenomenon where a percentage of the population essentially migrated between brands in a pseudo idolatrous methodology. When you really come down to it, a fan base is literally just the same thing as a cult. They both act as a community that brings people together to discuss a, sp a specific narrative. Except the religious ones actually at least try to offer the illusion of being beneficial to society at large. While the autonomic model are there purely for profit and offer hedonic sensory overload to compensate for any shallowness. Do you ever stop to think about how we live in a world where a bunch of people do crazy shit over cartoons, harass people, send death threats, sell cars for sauce, etc? Do you really think that's just normal behavior? No. These sorts of people would have been in a fucking monastery a couple hundred years ago. They're fanatics, pure and simple. Nothing wrong with being a fanatic if it's instructive, but these narratives don't have that interest in mind. So to put it bluntly, we can't literally live in a society where abstract mathematical 
formulas are in charge of a market that pretty much doesn't sell products anymore and is more focused on selling narrative scams based on perimeters from these algorithms and a bunch of wackos who in another town would have been witch burners who have nothing to spiritually satisfy the intrinsic obsessive tendencies are replacing a common cultural narrative with many different smaller ones in different tribes which is how we end up with Nazis and communists in a prosperous capitalist country thinking the end of the world is next week literally creating their own problems one could argue that we have too much freedom or choice when it comes to information about narratives and actually harming society. The Russians use avant-garde techniques in their propaganda to give their population so much bizarre data to sift through that they just conform with no real goal in mind. The Chinese just censor and have less overall data fed to their population. But Americans similarly have too much data and too little diversity in the data making it easy for context to correl them into a specific mindset and all it takes is a pair of eyes to see that the current mindset for American population is a p apathetic versus messiah complex murderousness. <sighs> the silver lining is I think these marketers don't know what they're playing with fire. I think it's entirely out of the question that someday soon a crowd of angry people will actually lynch content creators but not towing to their narrative complex and very soon they may begin to live in fear. People think the sexual harassment stuff is big happening but I think it's only going to be a drop in the bucket that'll be the 2020s. If not apocalyptic, there'll be interesting times.